University of Science and Technology, uh, specifically to the Faculty of Applied Sciences and Technology. This is the faculty that deals with engineering courses. And we're grateful to host you at the university and we are really speechless about your presence and the support you're going to give us. Uh, but before we start, who are we talking to? Uh, Dr. Jones, the Dean Faculty of Applied Sciences and Technology, can introduce the team before us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to host here Dr. Stephen Schiff from Yale University and uh, Dr. Godwin from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Dr. Steve has been my mentor for a long time, since 2013. I did my PhD in this lab. And ever since then, we have been working together on a number of projects, one of which is the Low Field MRI system. He supported us to set up a lab here at the faculty, which we call the MRI lab. That lab has now grown into a number of personnel. And uh, we've been building this MRI system for quite some time now with collaborations still from Dr. Steve and a number of other connections that he has made, including now uh, Dr. Godwin from the University of Ibadan, who is part of a training program in the MRI science that uh, we have also developed through the same cooperation with Dr. Steve. So I'm very glad to have both of you here today at uh, the Faculty of Applied Sciences and Technology. You are very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Dr. Dr. Godwin? Godwin. Godwin yes. Obole. Obole from no. Ibadan University, Africa, Nigeria. From the University of Ibadan. Uh, African problems are all the same. Specifically, just to talk to Dr. Steves. Tell us about your works in Africa and why did you choose Africa? Are you interested in Ibadan, must? or you're interested in Africa as a whole. Tell us about your work there. When I was a child, I visited a number of countries in Africa with my family. And it was so uniquely different from anything I'd ever experienced growing up as a child in the United States. And I held the thought that if I could ever go back and do something really useful, that I wanted to. And I visited after I became a children's doctor and I saw many of the problems that afflicted children here in Uganda. And for the next 16 years, I've devoted most of my professional effort to working with people in Ebrara, in Bali, in Pala, Gulu, and trying to see if we could make a difference in people's lives and health. Okay, that is so touching and thank you for thinking about Africans and carrying your memories forward. Speaking of the MRI project, um, what is the scope of the project? How far is it going to go in terms of uh, helping Africans? So there are many diseases that affect adults and children for which we can improve treatment and people's outcomes and often catch the disease earlier with better results if we can have a good image inside of the body. And MRI is probably the most useful and most expensive technology we've ever created. But we've known for many years you could do very good images at with a much smaller, weaker device. But they weren't as expensive and they didn't make as much money for the companies. And it was hard to use them to do well. And this is a very unique time because we are gathering a group of scientists and engineers and doctors who are learning to use these, what we call, low-powered images. Um, to give us the information we need to improve patient care. And that can be a revolution. Yeah. And I think it's one that you can take a major role in in Africa because you need to do it here. And I think the rest of the world will follow your lead. Yeah, that's true. Have you tried to do a little bit of background check about uh, 
the current state of MRI technology in Africa or compare Africa and the what I'd call developing countries and uh, less developed countries and the developed countries. Have we tried to see the current situation of the MRI technology? Well, it's barely penetrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're so expensive and so large and hard to maintain that the ratio of an MRI scan of the population is almost insignificant throughout mm -hmm. Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. And the alternatives are X-ray machines and uh, CAT scanners, CT scanners, which also use a lot of X radiation, and especially in children, it's a lot of radiation for them to receive. It's dangerous for them, and most of these can't be built in Africa or repaired with parts from Africa. And what we're focusing on are technologies that can be assembled from parts here and work very well. It requires uh, a, a lot of uh, training, and uh, Jonas has a uh, wonderful college of engineering here, and he's also a real expert on the physics and engineering of MRI. And that level of expertise is um, perfect for developing the demonstration that you can create this here and then show its usefulness. And of course, there'll be some things that won't work well on it. And for that, you may need some of these very expensive units. Okay. okay, that drives me to go to a little bit to George and John's in the sense that having heard this from uh, Steve, they say in Africa we do not. He has talked about the dangers of the of the what of the X rays and everything to children. But they say in Africa we do not need an MRI. We need X rays. We, that's what what causes that. Uh, can you comment something about it? Like we need X rays, not MRI. Is it that we don't know about it? Is it that uh, people fear the prices and everything? Just in relation to what uh, Dr. Steve has said, can yeah. you just respond to that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Angela, uh, for that question. Lovely question. Yeah, that's the belief of some people. Um, but um, the truth about it is that there are several technologies out there for imaging. And uh, with MRI, you can see inside the brain. With MRI, you can use the better resolution that the CT. CT has radiation. MRI does not use radiation. So with MRI, you can actually evaluate children and even adults that have neurological diseases and this can help make diagnosis and improve treatment outcomes in these patients. And Africa has growing number of neurological diseases. If you look at the trend, Africa has moved from infectious diseases and is going to even more neurological or non-communicable diseases. And MRI is the most sophisticated technology that can actually help in evaluation this thing. So Africa needs this technology. X-rays and ultrasounds are also important, but MRI is needed. The fact that MRI is expensive all over the world, what we are doing here is to provide an alternative, a low-cost MRI, an affordable MRI, a portable MRI that can be used to improve the outcomes of such diseases. The other technologies cannot look at the brain as an MRI can. So Africa does need this technology. And what we are doing here is to produce a tool that is affordable, that is sustainable in the region, and that can cause a slight, not even slight, it might be substantial change in the dynamics of the diagnosis and treatment of patients that have neurological conditions. Thank you so much. John, do you want to comment about it? Just yeah, I think uh, X-ray gives you 2D images, so it is pretty much not very useful in imaging the head. The CT on the other side is equally expensive compared to the MRI system that we are developing. So you wouldn't take the issue of cost away. And if you see the distribution of CTs in our country here in Uganda, it's almost similar to the distribution of MRI systems, uh, which are also expensive. But apart from the expense, it is also excellent technology. So there is risk of radiation associated with it. And it wouldn't be so good for children who are still developing and they're young and you have they are cells growing so fast. So that's why we are developing this low field technology that would be more appropriate technology for imaging of the brain. 
Thank you so much. Uh, back to you, Dr. Stead. Uh, there's a part where you've come with a team to help us build a low field MRI. Uh, what impact would this uh, low field MRI have on the health out outcomes in Africa? What what are you looking forward to? Like, what is what is the impact that it's going to make? So, on the disease side, okay. Africa, uh, and for instance, here in Uganda, there's a tremendous amount of head trauma from. Uh, uh, motor vehicles and motorcycles, motor motors, uh, to treat people who have serious head injuries, we have to take a quick look uh, to see, for instance, if they have a blood clot and it needs to be taken out. Um, you can only do that if you have an image that's available uh, when someone has an emergency. We see a tremendous amount of infection in the brain in very young infants, which is what I had, uh, have specialized in for many years here. And in those children, we see a lot of them that then have water on the brain, mm -hmm. hydrocephalus. And then you have a huge need to operate on those children at the centers in Uganda that can do it mm -hmm. to take care of the fluid buildup. Mm -hmm. uh, and you cannot do that well unless you have an image to guide the surgeons. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you want to prevent these things, but prevention and treatment go hand in hand. Uh, this is a technology which I think can be centered in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, at the risk of an extra minute, there was a, a business uh, professor who was very famous who talked about disruptive technologies. The difference is, when I was a child, they had no personal computers. They had mainframe computers. Very expensive, very large, very few places had them. And they didn't want to see personal computers come around, because that was their business. Once you had something that wasn't as good, but it was good enough for most problems. Then the whole world is now using them, and very few people want the expense of these large machines. We use the big ones on occasion. But the power of a laptop was good enough for almost all the problems that anyone in this room needs to take care of. And it is hard to see that technology emerge. And often it has to emerge in a place away from the health systems that think they have to depend on the high field, the big expensive MRIs. I think that once we show how to use this and that it's really helpful and much less expensive, the rest of the world will also want to adopt it because all the medical systems in the world are running out of money. Yeah, must be. Now that you told us you've been in Africa, you came to Africa only a child, considering the infrastructure challenges, uh, do you think this is sustainable? Yes. Like, like uh, do you think what you're going to set up, even on the price, do you think it's going to be sustainable? And how? Sustainability is actually something I think a great deal about. Mm -hmm. And for a given disease, Technology is just one piece. Uh, we should look at how at sustainability, if I can quote one of your leading economists in Uganda, Joseph Mouvala, who's your executive director of your National Planning Authority. Um, he defines sustainability to me as optimization. Yes. That's key. So there's a room full of engineers here and they can optimize treatment given the technologies you have. You want to know what the outcomes are for the cause. You want to know for the lifetime of that patient, have you reduced their illness, given them a better quality of life, and extended their lives for what your society needs to pay for treatment and prevention and technology. 
And this is a way only to dramatically reduce one piece of that system that I just painted for you. Yes. And if you can reduce the cost of diagnosis, you can improve treatment, improve outcome, and ultimately balance that against prevention. So I don't think it's even an option. That's a long explanation for saying you have to evaluate. And the challenge for the engineers or the physicians in Africa is can they make this work to make care for the diseases of importance more sustainable? So your question is actually the question to me. And I don't think any of us want to come and say we can make a better gadget use this gadget. Yeah. Okay, um, this will go around to the three of you, and uh, how do you plan to translate the, the MRI, uh, law field MRI to be developed, uh, to take it out there to the market, right from the bench to the clinics in Africa? How do you plan to translate it from there? From prototype, translate it, and then we see that it's out there in the field and it's gathering attention. Do you understand? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, but before I start, I just want to mention something also about the sustainability. Yeah. Uh, um, this technology is a new technology, and I think this is going to be the first time ever in the world that we're doing this in Africa. This um, new field technology. It's important that we are going to train people. So you're going to be training engineers. You're going to be showing them what is possible. So this will be a point where young people will learn something new and they can innovate, they can come up with ideas and build newer systems. So this is just going to be the first system, it's a prototype. Once we can show young people in Africa that they can, we can empower them. So the sustainability is in the, in the development of their minds, that they can do this. And it can be done within their system. They don't have to go out to get this technology. The technology we're bringing the technology home. So that will sustain it. If we have people that can develop this too, they have, we, we educate their minds, and the local tools are available, they can use that, that uh, the, the tools to be able to make a change in the design. In the terms of translation, yes. we are hoping that if we show this thing, we are going to hope that governments, education ministers and things, will begin to look for funds to be able to invest in people to be able to make more of these products. Mm -hmm. We are advocating that for grants from government to be able to multiply even this prototype. And then commercial vendors also can invest and make sure that they can produce this in multiple systems and distribute it around not just schools, but around also in clinics and use a way of validating it, comparing it with other systems, do preclinical trials. And once that is achieved, well, I'm sure it will be available in clinics. This system is very low cost. It is affordable, and then also it's something that is accessible. Mm -hmm. So if that is, if we're able to break this barrier of getting the prototype to work, what we will need is support from governments, support from international and local institutions to support the production mm -hmm. of these tools, and then we begin to test them within clinics, and then when the, when the doctors see that it's helping to change the dynamics of their patients, they will begin to use it. Just do you want to react to that translation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Angela. Uh, I think one of the things that we want to do this week, we have a team here that uh, will come and uh, we are going to be building the system in these next two weeks, a better one from the ones we have been developing so far. One of the things we want to show within these two weeks that it is doable within Africa, that we can develop this thing locally. And that is one of the models of sustainability also, because if we can develop it locally, then we can maintain the cost uh, to be a bit low. And then uh, once we demonstrate uh, that we can make the system, we'll seek to try it clinically uh, in a clinical environment to demonstrate that we can not only build it, but it can actually require images which are clinically useful. And once we are through with that, then we'll seek support of government and other institutions to come and join us 
in translating this into clinical practice now because we will need a more wider team than just the engineering team, than just the clinical team. The perception of the people alone, some people still think MRI is as bad as X-ray technology. So this is, these are some of the things we need now to, to capture that will build, bring everyone together to help us into translating this thing into actual practice. And this is the path that we are going to be taking. Before I come to Dr. Steves, uh, the both of you have spoken about government support. How do you want government to support you in this? Investment. Okay, what we are making now is uh, prototypes yes. uh, that we are going to so make one or a couple of systems. But if you want to roll out there, you need quite a sizable investment to make systems that are replicatable. I don't want to make one system that looks a little bit different from the other. So the manufacturing system has to be there to make sure that if I buy one system today, it will be the same that I buy tomorrow. And that will need uh, kind of some good investment to be put in to make systems that will be uh, for, for use in the industry. Yeah. And also, another way that we need government support is in training, in education, an in investment in education. We are building the system in a lab. This lab was funded by international funding. You know, we got funding from international bodies. But we also want funding, local funding, domestic funding, to also be able to build labs across Uganda, across Africa. So the kind of funding we're asking for is for training funds, for grants. If we build this, if the lab is established here, Government can support by start by setting up small travel fellowships for students across Africa, engineering, biomedical engineering students across Africa to come visit, stay and learn. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for forms. Forms make a, will make a change. And I think that apart from that, governments also can develop policies, you know, that can help these uh, government or uh, clinics or hospitals to be able to adopt this technology mm -hmm. and use it. So what we are needing from government is not just financial support, but also we also we need regulatory support. So that if in licensing, if we have this product, we're going to license it with vendors, mm -hmm. we're going to cooperate with international uh, original air equipment manufacturers, say, look, we need you, we have a product here. We, we are supporting our engineers to work with you to commercialize this product so that Africans can also have a share in the production of this technology so that they can have even the financial benefit from producing this technology so that we don't have people taking this technology, taking it out of African manufacturing and bringing it back to us. We will also have some part of that you know, financial and also engineering uh, cooperation. So that's what we want to go government in terms of supporting us with policy, supporting us with training funds and things like that. Those are the kind of support we need from government institutions. So that it's even owned by the Africans and yes. they like it like yes. their own project. Yes. It's owned they don't by own it yes. like it came no, no, from no. them. So it's owned by Africans. It's yes. led by Africans. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. what we want. We want a, a kind of a cooperation with the international so that you have a, a, a synergy between the global north mm -hmm. and the global south. Okay. You know, working together to produce a technology that is useful not only in Africa but in other low and low middle income countries. Mm -hmm. Because this technology, even we develop it here, we use it here, we make it work here, we can translate it to also in the, also other countries in Asia, you know, yes. Southeast Asia. We can go to other countries, you know, where this technology can be used. And so it's a global cooperation we're looking for. Oh, thank you so much. So thank Africa you. can contribute something to the world. That, that's why it's coming. And uh, Dr. Steve, would you like to add anything? If not, uh, would you, you may want to add to what they have said. But uh, my question to you is, uh, who are those supporting this initiative? So, uh, the support from us in the U.S. has been our National Institutes of Health. And I must say, I'm very grateful to them and proud of their recognition of how important it is to support this at an early stage. Mm -hmm. Because they think they're supporting this without benefit to their country in the US, they just don't understand how important in the future what's done here will be to our medical system as well. And that comes back to a previous question you asked me, because very eloquently stated by Dr. Kaplan and Dr. Chams, is that you're seeking sustainability yes. of the technology here in Africa. And we don't develop technologies in my country insular to the world. 
but we try to collaborate with our colleagues who are visiting this week in Europe and in South America as equals. And that is, this should be an example of a technology with the expertise, science, engineering, and even the development needed to make it sustainable uh, brings you to the level of a very important contributor because the whole planet needs this right now. And I, I view this as something that should be led by Africans, led by the physicians, led by the engineers, whose people and problems they're trying to have an impact on. So maybe our support is temporary um, and at some point we'll help each other further develop this in a very different way and a more sustainable way. Sounds great. Um, to the team here, uh, what, what plan do we have to commercialize this product? So I've done projects where we've gone from just doing medical research to partnering with aspects of your government in Uganda. And so people in your National Planning Authority, for instance, and now the Ministry of Science and Technology. Um, if we don't do that, then what we do is academic and we write papers and books. And, but if we want to implement solutions based on what we and our African partners have found, then there has to be a route to commercialize and implement those solutions or to develop policy. We help uh, you, uh, we actually built models to help track COVID at the height of the pandemic um, for Africa. And these efforts on policy and investment are essential to um, what has to come next. And that has to be no, that's not my end of the business. Okay. It's going to be the governments and the business people here mm -hmm. in the African societies that do that. Do you have any plans? Uh, you think you can contribute to this, commercializing the product? Well, um, like Steve has said, uh, we are in the business of developing the product. And then we are going to put it out there and looking for investors and uh, working with people licensing bodies to come up with, you know, support to commercialize it. Like the technology, once the technology is out there, I'm sure the investors will come in. And, and once we get approval, make it that is medically relevant and medically useful, I'm sure that once we have the license, the FDA approval and local government approvals, um, once the technology is proved to be effective and can change, you know, the dynamics of the health outcomes, I think that companies will want to invest in it because it's going to be like a, 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 and it's going to be going to be a return on investment, and I think uh, governments also will support such companies that would have interest in such uh, venture. I'm, I'm confident that that will happen. And then they also also say that um, what we are doing I, and Jones are doing is that we also have some support from uh, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to train Africans, you know, in MRI technology. And this um, training, it's a way that we are bringing people from all over Africa. We are bringing people from all over uh, in Botswana, Uganda, sorry, apart from Uganda, Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, you know, and they are coming all. So we, this will be like we are spreading the information to other countries. And once those people go out there, they will go with the message that, look, we've seen something done in Uganda. Can we do similar things here? So the message will go out. So in terms of commercialization, it might not be immediate, but the potential is there to spread the word that this technology can spread across Africa and across the world. John, do you want to react to that? Yeah, I think well, maybe as we go towards commercialization, uh, we have already seen that there is market, and this is what uh, the capital evangelists want to see, is their market for what you are developing. And we can see across Africa that the burden of neurological disorders is great. So there is definitely market for this. The other thing we need to show is that, that the technology work to solve that need. And this is where the engineering team comes in. And 
I'm hopeful that by in, in a short time we'll be able to demonstrate that this is the right technology for that uh, for that need and then uh, we'll be able to attract investors to invest into this technology and commercialize it. Thank you so much Dr. Steve, thank you for being here with us. In a special way, I would like to thank Dr. Jones and uh, Dr. Godwin for coming on board. The most important thing here is that we've made the idea be owned by the Africans and when they own it, they'll love it and they'll use it. The challenge we may have are finances and that's when you come on board and support us. Your final word to anyone who may be watching about this. Uh, thank you for letting us uh, work with you towards these important goals. Uh, we can't do this and none of us here can do this on our own. And, uh, so my thanks. Thank you. Um, Dr. Gordon, your final word. Yes, my final word is uh, just to thank uh, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative for supporting us uh, to train people in MRI technology and then to see how we can leverage on this first initiative to achieve greater goals in research and training for Africans. Dr. Jones. Yeah, I want to thank again Dr. Steve, as Chief and Dr. Godwin for coming here today. And to anyone watching us there who might not be a scientist, we've been talking about MRI, MRI. So MRI is magnetic resonance imaging. It's a technology that's used for medical imaging, basically. And it is not a dangerous technology, it's a very, very peaceful technology. That is why we can develop it in our lab. Thank you, Thank you for being at Mara University. Our motto says, succeed we must, not might. We must succeed in this. Thank you so much. Thank you.